Hey guys, welcome to my channel or welcome back to my channel. My name is Liz aka Knife Girl um, and I'm happy to see you today. So this video will be a little bit different than my previous videos but uh, I have been known to do this in the past. If you look back at my channel you'll see some cooking live streams. So this video is kind of a tutorial slash just cook with me and hang with me um, while I make some vegan curry onigiri. Onigiri are Japanese rice balls usually formed into cute little triangle shapes but they can honestly be formed into any shapes. If you're interested in learning about them there's a ton of recipes online and there's a ton of resources that you can look up to do some research. These are just how I make mine. I think they're delicious uh, and if you try them and make them and eat them let me know what you think. Feel free to add some variations to the recipe. I guess without further ado let's get cooking. Let me first say that um, I'm not claiming these onigiri to be you know traditional or necessarily authentic. These are just how I enjoy making them and eating them. They are vegan, um, but they are not entirely gluten-free because there is a little bit of wheat flour in the curry. But anyway, let me show you the ingredients. Forgot one. As far as ingredients, it's pretty simple and this, again, this is just my recipe. This is how I make it. You can add in whatever you want. You can change whatever you want, um, but this is how I make it. So the first thing you'll need is some short grain sushi rice. Now this is actually medium grain rice. When I look for rice, I'll just go to my like closest Asian market and find a bag of sushi rice and that works perfectly. However, I ordered this online because I just for whatever reason couldn't get to the Asian market and I really wanted to make onigiri. So this is kind of the next best thing I could get. Um, so. That might be an option for you if you live somewhere where you don't have access to an Asian market. Um, but if you do have access to an Asian market or an international market, you should definitely, first of all, check it out because I love Asian markets. There's so many awesome things to find and discover in there. But then you can also be sure to get, you know, good authentic ingredients. So this is medium grain rice. It'll work for this purpose. It sticks to itself pretty well, but... This is what I have for rice. Um, I will be making curry onigiri. Um, and this is my favorite brand of Japanese curry. This is what I'll be using. Um, I use the mild because I'm a weenie, obviously. Um, same with my sausage. I don't use the spicy because I am not a spicy person. But if you are a spicy person, if you like some heat, um, then by all means get whatever heat level you want. I believe this comes in mild, medium, and hot. Um, I always get the mild, but that's what I'm using. I'm using some Impossible Breakfast Sausage. Um, again, the not spicy kind. Um, you can use whatever meat you want. You can use tofu. You can essentially just whatever you want. This is what I like to use. I like the flavor and I think it works well. And I also like being able to make something that's vegan. And then finally, just some mirin and this is not essential but if you were going to an Asian market to find some rice it would probably be a good idea to pick some of this up too because this is just kind of a rice seasoning and it kind of adds a little element that just makes the onigiri really nice um yeah just I would pick some up it's it's fun to have especially if you make sushi or rice or onigiri or anything else. It's a fun thing to have. <sighs> All right, so let's get started. First things first, we are gonna wash this rice and put it in my rice cooker, so let's go. So I'm not gonna point the camera to the sink because I have dirty dishes in the sink, but my rice cooker came with a measuring cup. Most, if not all, rice cookers do. So I'm, for this, <clears throat> I'm just gonna use one cup of rice and essentially one cup of water. Here's that, I'm gonna wash it. 
so here's what I here's what it looks like when I wash the rice I just um, I put it in this little strainer thing and then I put that in the bowl the actual bowl I don't know pot thing that comes with the rice cooker I'll fill it with water I'll kind of give it a little swirl and then I already rinsed this once but basically you'll see that the water is a little murky now pro tip you can save this water to water your plants with and um, it's really good and healthy for them and has a lot of nutrients um, I don't have any plants to water so I'm just gonna dump it out for now Oops. and I'm gonna dump my clean washed rice right in the bowl of the rice cooker and then I'm gonna fill this cup up again with water pour it in and we are golden and then I'm going to set this in the rice cooker and I'm gonna let this sit on warm for 10 minutes then I'm going to actually turn it on and let it cook and when it's done cooking I'm gonna let it sit for another 10 minutes and then the rice will be perfectly cooked um, now you're if you have a rice cooker yourself, as a lot of people do, you, um, I would just follow the directions for your rice cooker. This is just the method that I have always found with this particular rice cooker to be um, ideal and it makes the best kind of rice for me. So that's what I'm gonna do. Okay, so I've set a timer for 10 minutes. When 10 minutes is up, I'm gonna press this little button to actually turn it on and let it cook. Um, and then once it is done cooking, I'll let it sit for another 10 minutes. And about that stage is when I will come back and start heating up the filling. So that way the rice and the filling will kind of all be done at the same time. So while we wait for the rice to cook, let me kind of explain a little bit more about the onigiri that I'm going to be making. I'm only making one cup of rice for this particular batch of onigiri because I'm just making some onigiri for a friend of mine who's helping me out with something so I'm I'm paying them in onigiri <laughs> essentially um, but if you were to say if you wanted to make a larger batch to bring to a gathering or a family event or something I've done two cups of rice before and that was honestly for me using these ingredients two cups of rice plus this whole thing of sausage plus like a brick or two of the curry is like the perfect um, ratio of ingredients in that usually I'm able to use it all up at the same time and I hopefully wouldn't have any left over um, so for right now um since I'm only making one cup of rice I'll probably honestly just use half of this um, because I'm also going to be making some smaller puppy puppy I'm talking to the people since I'm only making one cup of rice I'll probably only use half of this and then save the other half for another batch of onigiri maybe later in the week so let me show you some tools that I was going to use for this video I do have a couple different onigiri molds um, I'll probably <sighs> dog hair. I'll probably end up using this one because it's ever so slightly bigger than this. If you can see this is like two together. It's They're fused together. Um, this one is ever so slightly larger so I'll probably just use this one. Um, I bought this set from Daiso and this one which is slightly larger came in a um, an, an onigiri bento box set um, that I got for Christmas from my lovely boyfriend and since this one is just slightly larger I'll probably use this. Um, I will also show you how to form them by hand because you obviously don't need a mold. A lot of people in Japan just form them by hand and they look really cute and beautiful that way as well. Um, but I found that I like to, I don't know if this is, you know, proper protocol or whatever but I like to just do it while the rice is still warm and then I wrap it up in um, plastic wrap and the kind of moisture from the hot rice keeps the onigiris you know from drying out until you serve them um, I don't know if that's how you do it in Japan that's how I do it sorry if it's not authentic that's just how I do it so um, by using the mold it kind of 
saves your hands from getting the hot, you know, the heat of the rice. Um, the last time I made a really big batch of onigiri, I was forming them all by hand and the rice was just a little too hot and it was like I had, my hands were so red and almost burnt from just doing it and it was honestly kind of painful. So for this one, I'm going to try out my molds. I haven't used them before, but I think it'll be really nice to use these. And while I was talking about this, I forgot one other ingredient that you need, which is some nori. Here, let me pull it out of the Ziploc so that you can see it. So this is just some sushi nori, which is dried seaweed in kind of these sheets. Um, honestly, i you can find these in most grocery stores. Um, including, you know, regular American Western grocery stores. Um, my grocery store, which is Ralph's, has a, just an Asian aisle. And um, this is where this came from, which is very handy to have. So that's something also we can maybe do real quick is while we wait for the rice to cook, I can break these into strips because um, obviously I will not be using this whole sheet of nori. I will be breaking these into strips and um, using a little strip for each onigiri. So let's do that then. Let's for now just use two sheets. Honestly, I think that'll probably be more than enough because it's only one cup of rice, but it's probably be too much, but I'll use them again for um, whatever next batch I use. So I don't know if you can see this on camera. Eh, it looks like you can. These sheets have, they're perforated um, pretty much kind of for this exact purpose, for being able to tear it into little smaller usable strips. Um, I haven't yet found the perfect method for tearing these aside from just trying to carefully fold them. Oh, I lost it. Oh my gosh. Trying to carefully fold them along the perforation. It's very delicate work. And then tear along the fold. So now we have just a little strip. So that's what I'm going to try to do. Hopefully I don't um, get them too wonky. The thing is, if you're just making these for yourself or for friends, they don't have to be, you know, perfect, beautiful, um, aesthetic onigiri. Um, it is nice if you're, you know, making them for a gathering or something. Presentation in Japanese cuisine is very important and a huge element of it. So if you, you know, take some care to be neat and tidy and make them look as nice as you can. But it's, it's a hard thing. And if you mess up, if you get some, you know, weird, stray, you know, chunks coming out or something like this one's I think going to be a little bit wonky, then it is okay. Like, you know, there's some imperfections there. It's fine. It'll still taste good. It'll still look good. It'll be great. So let me keep doing this. Okay, so my camera did die while I was finishing ripping up all the nori but that's okay because I kind of got to the point anyway of you just have to walk away and let the rice finish cooking um, so the rice is finished cooking well it's in its last 10 minutes um, so we can now get started on the filling and then while the filling is cooking I will also explain one other ingredient that I missed which I have right here but let me get the meat started and then I'll talk about my furikake. These things are always so weird to open. Eek. Ah, jeez. I just dove right in there. All right. So I'm going to just use about half of this because, like I said, I'm not making a ton. And then I'll just save the rest for later. So. Splooge it all in there. That's a lot anyway. Just half of this little package seems like a lot. Okay. 
it's gonna simmer. Simmer, simmer, simmer. Ooh, it already smells really good. The reason that I use um, this, the breakfast sausage kind, as opposed to like the regular impossible like hamburger kind, um, is because this like the spices that they put in this just I think complement the curry really well because you know breakfast sausage usually comes with some you know various spices in it and I think it just works super well with the curry. So I'm just going to let this brown up a little bit. Just going to let it brown up and then we're going to plonk a um, plonk a brick of curry in there. So if you've never used this kind of like pre-made curry, um, I don't know, what do you call this? I just call them bricks before. It just comes like this with a little packet and open it and then I like to break it like this so now I've just got a little brick and I'll probably just use this one single brick it's already melting in my hand it's beautiful love this stuff oh my gosh it smells so good already Jesus Christ and then I I don't drain this or anything you know it, as it cooks down with most meat it's got you know oil and fat and whatnot and I'll just mix the curry straight in and it just makes a lovely little sauce and it's beautiful. And I'll also kind of try to break it up into like little you know break up the big hunks the meat so that you have little bits that you can just kind of spoon more easily into the onigiri. Okay, so I think we're at a good stage where I can just plonk this right in there. And honestly, I'll probably add a little bit of water just to kind of make it more of a sauce and less of like a coating on the meat. And then this brick will just melt in there. So let's just let it do its thing and kind of melt. Oh my gosh. If you could smell this right now, you would, you would get it. Ooh, it smells so good. Add a little bit more water because it's getting a little thick. The water, the water kind of cooks down. And it just kind of helps it be more of like a sauce, a saucy meat as opposed to just like dry meat coated in curry. That's what I was trying to say before, but I don't know if I explained it super well. All right, so I turned the heat off and here's, if you can see, here's what we have. It's just like a nice curry, saucy meat product. <laughs> so I'll just put this on the back burner so it's stopped cooking, but I'll just kind of let it sit while I situate my rice because my rice should be done now. So there was one ingredient that I forgot to mention, but this is totally optional. So this is furikake um, it's rice seasoning and this can be used in a, a few different ways I myself um, like to mix it into just mix a bunch into the rice before I start forming the rice balls um, a lot of people will just sprinkle this on top of their finished rice balls as like a um, a garnish kind of decoration extra flavoring thing um, so it it kind of depends 
on what you like to do, um, what, I don't know what your family likes to do. Um, so just the way that I make it is I'm not a huge fan of just plain white rice. So I like to really flavor it up before I make my rice balls. Um, so I'll show you what I do in a second, but I just wanted to show, um, I have a ton. I don't know if you can see, I have a ton of different varieties. So this one is one of my favorites. It's salmon and nori. Um, I've got this one that just smells really good and I'm just kind of showing you so you can see all the different like varieties again this is shrimp and I like oh I love this one too I might put this one in my um, my onigiri today but um, these you can get at also any Asian market these are very popular and they use them all over the place um, actually I found one or two of these at the regular Ralph's as well I think I think this variety is the kind I found at Ralph's. So you can check your local market, but definitely an Asian market or a Japanese market would 100% have a bunch of these. They also come in like little individual packets, um, but I prefer the big shakers. As you can see, I use them a lot. I prefer the big shakers because I just think it's easier and I use them a lot. So this is roasted black seaweed. Let me see, I got the shrimp, the salmon. This is teriyaki bonito. This is vegetable mix. I don't think I've tried this one. I just saw it at the store and I wanted to try it. Looked good though. Ooh, maybe I'll try this today. You know what? Yeah, I'll try this one in my onigiri today. And then, oh, this one's sweet sake bonito. This one's unopened. So I think I will use this one today. So my rice is done. It is cooked. Ooh, look at that steam. It's beautiful. Um, so my rice cooker did come with like a rice paddle, but I can't find it. So I'm just going to use this um, wooden spatula thing. Here is how I season my rice. Again, this is all by preference. You don't even have to do, you don't have to do any of this. This is just how I, this is just how I like to do it. I don't tend to love eating just plain white rice even even with the onigiri filling I think it's a little bland so I just like to flavor the um, dickens out of my rice so what I will add is a good healthy splash of mirin mirin is kind of like adds a sweetness to it Ooh, I think this will work really well with the curry because it's got it looks like it's got some like carrots and maybe hunks of peas and stuff in there so I put the mirin in and in all honesty, I'll just, again, this is my preference. Maybe I probably use a lot more than, ooh, than a lot of Japanese people or other people do. But I like my rice to be super flavored. So mix this in a bit so it's nice and homogenous. So I'm just trying to make sure that I'm not missing any pockets of rice because we don't want any little you know any little hunks of boring white rice and again this is all optional this is just how I like to do it maybe this isn't the correct way I never said it was this is just how I like to do it so this is where we at where where we're at I've got the mirin and my furikake in there and let's make our rice balls so I kind of set up the camera at this angle so I have some room to work. Um, but just so you know, up here I have my meat, my filling. Here I have my rice. And this is how I like to situate it when I'm doing it. I have my mold. And I also have this bowl of water here. This is actually important. This is very important if you're going to be forming your rice balls by hand. So I'll show you how I do it by hand and then I'll show you how the mold works. Um, but I'll show you by hand first. So the water is very important because it helps keep the rice from sticking to your hands. So what I will do to form a rice ball by hand is, there we go, dip my hand in the cold water. It helps to have cold water if you're, um, rice is still pretty hot like mine is hand in cold water let me get a little hunk of it 
Ooh, it's hot. <clears throat> Get a little hunk of the filling. A bit more rice on top. Like a sandwich. I'm going to dip my other hand in the water. And then we're going to start, essentially start working it into this little triangle shape here. So what I do is I'll kind of just cup, you know, cut my hands like this and kind of just form it. I don't know if you can really see and I'll kind of turn it. See, we're kind of getting a triangle shape. It's not going to be perfect, but it'll be good enough. So I'll just kind of smush it, smush it into a lovely triangle shape. Again, not perfect. We got some of the filling poking out, but that's fine. And then what I will do ah, is take some onigiri, shiny side out. Wrap it up. And there you go. You got a little rice ball. Easy peasy. So, um, I don't know if I do this entirely correctly with the nori. Um, I know if you will buy a store-bought onigiri, they will have the nori kind of packaged separately so that you can um, unwrap it right before you eat it and have it be crunchy. Um, I like to wrap the nori while the rice is still hot and wet because I like it how it kind of binds it all together and makes this, you know, cute little easy to eat package. Um, and I like the consistency of it being more chewy. Um, so it's up to you. And there's different ways that you can wrap the nori too. You may see just like a little hunk in the bottom. I like to do it like this so you, it kind of keeps it a little bit more contained and easier to eat. <sighs> But there we go. So now let's try doing it with our mold. I think to be safe, why don't we just dunk this whole, dunk the whole mold in water just so it's got, it's a little wet. We'll throw some rice in there. There we go. We'll throw a little filling. That might've been too much. <laughs> Honestly, probably was a bit too much filling. I should just get a spoon. I'll do that. And then we'll throw a bit more on top. Take our, take our, oop, gosh, our top, our lid. And then just smoosh, smoosh it. Smoosh with all your power. And then got this little like release thing. ka -chow! Look we have a perfect oh my gosh it's absolutely perfect. Wrap it up. Look at that. It's beautiful. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna I'm gonna individually wrap these as I go because like I said I don't know if this is the correct way to do it but I like to wrap them excuse me I like to wrap them up so that the plastic wrap can kind of hold in the moisture and the steam and it keeps them from drying out especially because I'm going to be taking these in a couple hours to my friend who will be eating them this one kind of got wrapped weirdly and also I feel like Wrapping them in plastic wrap once you shape them can kind of, you know, give you a second chance to kind of form them up. So then you have like a cute little package, little tiny package for you. So let me wrap this one and then, and then we'll just go, we'll just form them. We'll just keep forming little rice balls until we run out of ingredients. Ooh, these are going to be so good. They smell, ooh, they smell so good. So I'm just wrapping them to make sure that every inch is covered in the plastic wrap. And there you go. Little perfect little onigiri. So let's make another one. I think I should put these here so that way they don't get water. I don't know if this is essential, but I just feel like it would make sense to dip the mold in water so that the rice isn't sticking to the plastic. Just maybe, I don't know, maybe we'll try it. So a little bit of rice, 
big hunk of filling. Get on in there. A little bit more rice on the top. There we go. Boop, boop, boop. Take our lid. Smoosh. Smoosh it down. Nice and smooshed. Then how about this? We'll take our seaweed and we'll just fucking go right in there. Do a little rappy rappy. Ta-da! Ta-da! Right, we'll put that right there. Get ourselves some plastic wrap. And maybe, I don't know, I've never tried it. If you have like beeswax wrap, maybe that'll work. Um, or if there's some other more eco-friendly way to wrap these that you have, go for it. I've not, I don't have any beeswax wrap. I, I've not tried it. Um, but I do think it really helps to wrap them. So, and even though it's not the most eco-friendly, Maybe one day I'll find a solution for that. I don't know. Come on, dude. Come on. Ooh, that's probably too much. Half that. Smoosh it in there. Some more rice on top. Rice. These molds are actually helping so much and they make it so uniform and perfect. I'm going to do this from now on because this is the first time I'm ever using these molds. Usually I've just been doing it by hand, but these are game changing. Look, look how perfect that is. Beautiful. Wrapping him in his little jacket. see leaking out the side there maybe I need to do a better job of uh, putting rice all around the sides it's fine it'll still taste delicious I tell you what <sighs> so while I'm doing this let me talk about um, if you google onigiri and fillings you can see that they come in just a huge variety of fillings there's the world is your oyster as far as fillings my two whoop knock my camera my two very favorite that i like to do are this curry this curry one is my absolute favorite and then another easy one that i'll do is salmon and avocado um and I'll do that one if I'm making, excuse me, if I'm making some onigiri for someone who is gluten-free because as delicious as this curry is, it's not entirely gluten-free because there's wheat flour in the actual curry mix. The rice is actually gluten-free. If, if we didn't have the curry, it would be gluten-free, but it's as it is, it is not. But if I'm making some onigiri for someone who is gluten-free, what I will do is salmon avocado. So pretty much the same process as far as the rice and the molding and all that jazz. Um, but I will just make like a little, I'll take a can of uh, canned salmon, like um, this one. I'll use a lot. Um, salmon, no bones, no skin. And then I will take uh, an avocado, like usually like a small like usually a small avocado and one can that size of tuna will I think and about two cups of rice will be the kind of the perfect ratio so all I will do 
is take that salmon, um, drain it, you know, do all the junk. I'll mix in some Japanese mayo um, and I'll cut up the avocado and essentially just make like a whole big kind of salmon salad, you know, mixture with it all. Just throw it all in a bowl, mix it all up and then use that as my filling for this process that you see me doing here. Whoops, I keep hitting the camera. Oh, I think I've got like one left <laughs> and all of this filling. So I'll just have to eat that for lunch <laughs> or make some more rice later. But let me see. So yeah, I will do that and that's a good one. And when I, oh, I keep hitting the camera, I'm so sorry. Whenever I make the salmon avocado onigiri, I will season the rice with um, the furikake like I usually do. I'll put some mirin, but then I'll also put some soy sauce in the rice itself because it kind of gives it like a, a sushi kind of taste, which I enjoy. But that is all, you know, when you make these, really you just need to play with it and see what you like, see what you don't like, practice making the rice balls and, you know, practice doing it all and see what works and what doesn't. But they, as you can see, are extremely easy. So this is my last one because I ran out of rice. <laughs> I think I made it too full, but it's whatever. This last one will be big. So now let's see. This is number six with one cup of rice. I've made six onigiri, which is about perfect for one person. Probably, I don't know, depends on how hungry you are. But these are just all for my one friend. So I think six is fine. Um, so that stands to reason that if you use two cups of rice, you would get 12, right? So maybe that can kind of help you plan. If you want to make onigiri for like a gathering or something, you can plan like, okay, 12 onigiri this size will fit, will feed, you know, how many people are they big eaters? Should I make 24 or is 12 going to be enough? Is it just going to, you know, a snack for everybody? That can kind of help you. I, yeah, like I said, I used one cup of rice. It made six onigiri about this size. Kind of fits in the palm of your hand. And I guess, honestly, I probably, probably could have used just like a quarter of my meat, but it's fine. I love, it's delicious. I will just eat this. Maybe I'll make another cup of rice. That's what I'll do, Ashley. Yeah, I'll just make another cup of rice for myself and I'll, put it all in a bowl and have a delicious little curry rice bowl. Um, but that's it for now. Here's my little onigiri. Yay, how exciting. I just wanted to show you onigiri are super awesome for um, like bringing to lunch, packing lunches for like kids or for yourself if you're going to work because um, they're so portable and so handy. Um, and then I just wanted to show you a couple little things that I have. This is like a little insulated, oh, it's coming apart. <laughs> this is like a little insulated onigiri, I don't know, case thing. Um, I got this from Daiso, which is one of my favorite places ever. This one seems like it's intended for some slightly larger onigiri than the ones I've made. You can make them larger too. You can make them kind of sandwich sized. But here, I can fit like three of them in here. Zip it up. You have a little insulated little pouch for all your little onigiri. You can take it to lunch. Take it as like a snack if you're, I don't know, you're going to the DMV and you're going to wait in line for four hours and you want to bring a little sneaky snack. Or maybe you're going on a plane and you want to 
bring some food for your journey. Can you do that? Can you bring can you bring homemade food through uh, security? And then also, I have this little Totoro bento box that my boyfriend gave me for Christmas that is um, shaped specifically for onigiri. So what you do is you fit the little... Um, this mold actually came with this kit. So like I was saying, this mold came with this bento box. Um, I presume specifically so that you can make the you know, correct size onigiri. So then you can put them in here. You can put some little salad or something in here. Close it up. Take it to lunch. You got your little, your little lunch snack thing with you. And I don't know, put some, I wonder if you can even fit it. Honestly, you could, yeah, probably fit a third one. Just cram it in there. There you go. It fits three onigiri. Hooray! And then plus whatever you want to put in here. I don't know. Put some salad or some vegetables or something. Ta-da! And a little bucket. Hooray! Alright, well, I think that's it for now. I'm going to clean up this mess. And, I don't know, probably talk to you. Do an outro. So... Thanks for watching. Hey, okay, bye. Okay, guys, thank you so much for watching my video. If you enjoyed this video and you want to see more content like this, please consider subscribing to my channel. Please consider hitting that thumbs up button. Yeah, so I hope you're having a great new year so far, and I will see you hopefully next week. Bye, friends.